What's up, Ego Hackers? Welcome to CS Joseph Podcast. And uh, we're going to be discussing INTJs today. But before I do, please realize we're having a coaching sale right now, and it's going to be ending very soon. So you might want to get in on that. csjoseph.life forward slash coaching. I think there's like a 20% off discount. If you're a Journeyman member or an Acolyte member, you have additional discounts on that, and they'll stack. Those discounts stack. So I think you get like maybe half off or more. So if you guys want to get coaching or you want to get typing or you want to get it for somebody else, you might want to check that out, okay? Like, um, let's see here. Uh, a couple of people are like, you know, hey, I want to get my family typed. So they end up getting sessions for other people and it really works out and then they get verified. And then you join the Discord, you get the CSJ verified tag or CS verified tag, which gives you access to the CS verified uh, channel where myself and Chris Taylor participate in uh, regularly. And Chris Taylor ends up uh, working with those folks to help further the science on an almost daily basis. It's a great channel. You guys definitely want to get access to that. So yeah, that's at our Discord. And if you want to get onto our Discord, find the link tree uh, link below. And I believe our Discord invite is contained there. So you can definitely check that out. So yeah, on to the question. Uh, INTJs. Uh, yes. So how can INTJs uh, escape paranoia and fear of abandonment or being abandoned, uh, etc.? And uh, it, the answer is pretty, pretty simple, but it's all, it all has to do with extroverted sensing inferior. Extroverted sensing function is the function that is attached to a person's environment, right? It's attached to their physical environment. And the physical environment really, really matters, right? So how is that How is that going to work? How is that physical? Like, you hear, this, you hear a lot of sayings out there. Like, like, take INFJs, for example. You know, they ultimately become the average of the people they are around, right? Uh, or you look at ISFJs. ISFJs become the sum of the people that they're around. But how does that affect INTJs? I would say that given that they're an INJ, similar to INFJ, that INTJs also have a similar problem and that they become the average of the people they are around. And what I mean that, I mean that from a point of intellect, okay? Because INTJs, if they don't surround themselves with smart and intelligent people, eventually over time, their own intelligence due to their TI critic inside of their souls is actually going to be entropic. It's going to be in a state of decay. Okay, an actual consistent state of decay. They're li- they're literal and inte- they will become stupider over time. Is basically what I'm saying. Their intelligence will decay, so they have to constantly be around people who are more intelligent than them, or be reading books, or being educated on a consistent basis to keep their extroverted thinking parent sharp. But you know, then they'd have to like you know take personal responsibility for that. And a lot of people out there. You know, because TE parent can get pretty lazy. It can be irresponsible, especially when it's in extroverted thinking teenager mode and hasn't matured into that responsible uh, parent yet. Because it hasn't even done that yet, that too ends up becoming a serious problem, right? Dang, all these paddleboarders out here. Maybe I should go paddleboarding. I'm kind of, kind of thinking about it. Kind of thinking about it. Getting a little envious. My envy, deadly sin, is like those people are happier than me, and I have a paddleboard and I could be out there right now. Anyway, so it's really important that INTJs are around people to be able to pick their brains, absorb their intelligence so that they can remain intelligent, basically. It's, it's mega important. You know, and there's other types that are similar to that, like ENFPs, but ENFPs have introverted sensing, and thus they can take all those ideas that they've been able to mine out of people's heads with them, whereas the INTJ, not so much. The INTJ actually has to practice those ideas in order for them to retain those ideas. And honestly, INTJ won't always be able to do that. But one of my biggest criticisms of INTJs is that INTJs never are actually like, you know, home. They're never home. Oh wait, that's wrong. They're home too much. They're home too much. They never go out. They don't socialize. They're so antisocial. And the more antisocial an INTJ is, 
the less intelligent they are. That's a fact. And what, what they often don't realize is that lack of a social life means will lead that will lead their intellect to just decay into nothingness it's horrible and here's the thing it's not good enough for them to just socialize with just anybody they have to socialize with quality people and it's really hard for them to determine who a quality person is due to their expert feeling trickster getting in the way because it's like how do i know that that person is valued so they need to like have some kind of qualification system but because their ni hero is so obsessed with certainty and certainty is the most important thing to an INTJ. It's like, well, I'm not even gonna bother unless I'm going to get what I want. So then they end up not willing to go do, to experiment in different social situations and with different people. And they should, they should be experimenting. Experimenting with new environments, experimenting with new people. They need to learn how to use their ENTP shadow in a wise way. But oftentimes they don't. And it's really frustrating. Like what the hell? ENTP shadow is all about experimentation. The ENTP archetype experiments the most, even more than, even more, they're on the constant journey of experimentation. They experiment even more than INTPs because the ENTP is the method actor of process, the method actor of systems. They try on every process or every system like a second skin to see if it's valid or not. And if it works, they allow, they, they cut away the stuff that doesn't work and then they absorb the rest of it and then it actually becomes a part of them. INTJs need to learn this skill as well with their ENTP shadow, which means INTJs need to get off their ass, get out of their, their little anxiety, little insecurity, oh, I gotta perform around people, or, you know, get over yourselves and get off your ass, get out of your house, get away from your computer, get away from your dark souls, for example, get away from your World of Warcraft, like seriously, and go out and be social. You know, this is why I recommend, you know, INTJs learn Magic the Gathering because it allows them the opportunity to be around other intellectuals in a social area. It's probably the easiest place to go. INTJs used to be able to play chess all the time, but chess has basically died, and now Magic the Gathering has replaced it, especially if you're playing Commander Format, which is insanely more difficult. Commander Format is, uh, well, <laughs> It's like playing four chess boards simultaneously. It's four dimensional chess. And each one of those chess boards uh, can interact with the other chess boards. It's crazy. And you got four people. And you gotta make deals, it creates them, it, it teaches them social skills, for example, and you're around other intellectuals. The people that are more successful at Magic the Gathering Commander format are intellectual. And you'll be exposed around intellectuals and it'll help you be sharp because, you know, as it is written, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man to another. But this also applies to INTJ women. If you're not going out, then you're gonna be dumb. Sorry, you know? And then people are gonna walk around thinking like, oh, there's that dumb blonde, you know? Like a lot of INTJ women out there, especially ones who are ESFP focused, end up having that reputation when they shouldn't have. But it's because they're afraid of socializing, because they're afraid of rejection. This is how your guys' fear of rejection actually low, reduces your intelligence because your TI critic is causing your own intelligence inside of your head to decay. It literally has entropy. You don't have introverted sensing to prevent the entropy because you have introverted sensing demon. So you forget everything. So you have to use it constantly with the use or using function, which is extroverted sensing, making yourself useful or making others useful. And one of the ways you do that is by surrounding yourself with intelligent people. Go out. Who cares if you don't know who they are? Who cares if you don't know if they're quality? Go find out yourself, and if they're not, do what you experts sensing inferiors do the best, reject them, and move on to the next person. I don't care if you feel bad about yourself. You don't wanna become the average of the people you are around. You have to constantly be filling them with new people on a regular basis. You know, one of my good friends, uh, Chad, He's in the uh, Facebook group. I hang out with him at least twice a week. Really fantastic fellow, um, great INTJ. He's ENTP focused. Uh, he's a responsible par parent. Yeah, he's becoming a responsible businessman. He's, uh, he's, he's a really, really hard worker. Definitely a top performer. Uh, he'll, he'll pick up skills super quick, you know, uh, like, like any skill. Like we've been playing pool a lot recently. He went on YouTube watch some videos on pool, and then immediately just started dominating at the pool table, for example, when we were playing pool last night even. And like, 
that's what he does. He actually forces himself to get out of the house. And by doing so, it makes him more intelligent. It makes him more capable. He's just better every time. And I see so many other INTJs who lack that entirely. So like, for example, at one of the bars that we play at, I met this other INTJ who never goes out, who ends up getting uh, dragged out by, by her friends, etc. And all she could do is just sit at the bar reading a book. And it's like, okay, are you actually like gonna socialize? You're gonna realize that, you know, you have a lot of mega intelligent people around you right now? Or are you just gonna sit there trying to read some, you know, bullshit book about uh, Olympic athletes and Olympic coaching so that you can come up with some principles for success to increase your own personal performance? When you literally have a treasure trove of, you know, secrets and principles all around you, especially from my INTJ friend Chad, who's basically figured it out. But no, you just, you know, most certainty, right? My, my NI hero certainty. You know, you want that guarantee, that guaranteed outcome, or else you're not gonna bother, right? No, INTJs, you're triple progression for a reason, which means out of everybody on the earth, other than ENFPs, it's your job to consistently be on a journey. And if you're not in the journey of experimenting with people and taking a risk, because for some reason your NI hero is so obsessed with certainty that you end up becoming risk averse, start taking some risks, especially in your social lives, because taking risks will bring, it will make you more attractive, people won't reject you, and then guess what? You'll be around intelligent people, and then all of a sudden your intelligence will not be in a state of decay anymore. It'll be consistently building, and you'll be better off as a person. So what is the answer to the question? The answer is change your environment, change your social life, be in a, a mode of consistent change, constantly adding new people all the time. You do that by getting hobbies, go to meetup.com, start a meetup, do something, take action. Because if you're just gonna stay at home because you're so afraid of rejection, you're gonna end up dying stupid, basically, worthless, uh, incapable of intelligent thought. Like, seriously, your TI critic is trying to tell this to you. You need to get out there and pick other people's brains. And if you're picking low quality brains, eventually you'll be able to tell which brains are high quality after a while. And that's all your SI demon is trying to get you to do. Put in more effort, folks. And this is how you put in more effort so that you can actually like obtain happiness and reduce the sorrow in your life as INTJs. That's what your SI demon wants, wants for you in its angelic form. So you might wanna follow its lead there. All right, put in more effort in your social game. Uh, an example of uh, a book that can teach you good social skills for this would be uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And also, believe it or not, The Rational Male, Volume 5 by Rollo Tomasi. Something I also highly recommend INTJ women read as well, given how masculine they are. And Tomasi is an INTJ, and he spent his whole life with his F.E. Trickster and his S.I. Demon coming up with these principles for social success. You might want to pay attention to that. You really might want to pay attention to that. I think you'll learn a lot. Start there and then go get a social life, at least a meaningful social life. And then all of a sudden, like, you'd be better off. So anyway, folks, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next episode.